3. Zinc is often found in nature together with lead and sulphide ores. Different industrial processes can be used in the production of zinc. One of these is an electrolytic process and the other is thermal. In the electrolytic process, zinc sulphide is converted into zinc oxide by roasting in a furnace at 1300 Kelvin. Okay, we've got our equation for that and we've got the data in the table referring to it. So we've got our delta H formation for all of the substances and you've got S as well. So you know you're going to be asked to calculate your, your delta H and your delta S. From the conversion, use the data in the table to calculate delta H. Okay, so you're going to your data book and you're getting that delta H is equal to the sum of delta H F of your products minus your delta H, sorry, sum of delta H F of your reactants. Okay, so it's only going to be worth one mark because you've got that equation in your data book. You're not going to have to work that hard for it. Um, and then it's just a substitution. So our products are these guys. So our products are here and here. And our reactants are here. So these are our reactants. They even put them in a nice order for you. Okay, right. So we now need to plug that in. So what have we got? We've got two times minus 350 plus 2 times minus 297 minus 2 times minus 206 and I really don't even have to put in the other one which is the 3 times 0 okay um, do all that and I get minus 28 sorry 882 kilojoules per mole. I don't actually even have to write in the kilojoules per mole because it says in kilojoules per mole in the stem of the question. Um, and if you've written in incorrectly, you lose the mark. So kind of up to you as to whether you want to go with that or not. Okay, and then you've got your delta S and you're going to do exactly the same equation, but this time with the sum of the delta S uh, products. Sorry, just S. Uh, minus the sum, that's a very bad sum, of your S of your reactants. Okay, plugging this one in, so we've got 2 times 44 plus 2 times 248 minus 2 times 58 plus 3 times 205, giving us a grand total of minus 147. Now in the mark scheme they were taking this in terms of significant figures to minus 150 if you preferred basically. Um, so either of these would be perfectly valid. Okay calculate the theoretical temperature in K above which the reaction is no longer feasible. I'm going to do this up the side because I've obviously clipped the Questions funny. Okay, so we are looking for our delta H, sorry, not our delta H, our delta G. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This is the equation you're going to use, and the fact that you must use is that the reaction is feasible when delta G is zero. So what we're going to do is t solve this for delta G at zero, and um, we're looking for T, so rearrange, and we get so T delta S is delta H, so T is delta H over delta S, okay? And that's fine because you've got your numbers. The only thing that's important is that you recognise this was in kilojoules and this one was in joules, okay? So when we put this in, uh, we're going to put this in at uh, minus 882000 rather than minus 882 and we're going to put this one in as minus 147, okay? Um, you could, I suppose, just not put in the minuses because you know a minus divided by minus is not going to be any different from a plus divided by plus, but it's up to you. And that gives us 6,000 Kelvin. So if you'd also, if you'd gone at the 150, uh, that gives you, that gives you 5,880 Kelvin. Okay. Any of these are acceptable it's within the range. Okay. Um, okay. For process, a mixture of zinc oxide and lead oxide is reacted with carbon in a furnace at a temperature of 1200 Kelvin. Data for metals and metal oxide shown in the table. By considering all the information, this, this would be important. If it says all, you're going to have to use everything. 
suggest how a sample of zinc metal and a sample of lead metal could each be removed from the furnace. Okay, right, so we're at 1200 Kelvin, so let's look at what's happened. Well, for a start, the zinc is past its boiling point, so we have, importantly, a gas, okay? Lead has melted, but not boiled. Okay, we're past here. And we've got our zinc oxide has not melted or boiled, and our lead has melted but not boiled. Okay, right, so well, let's deal with the boiled first. Zinc has boiled, so we have a gas. So this is going to be reasonably easy. Uh, we have a gas, so we're going to be able to collect the gas um, from the top because the gas is less dense here. So that's okay, right? So gas collect from the top. So there's our, there's our zinc metal. Our lead we have as a liquid, but we also have another one that's a liquid. So we need to find a way to separate them and that's gonna be this density bit, okay? So our lead has a higher density than our lead oxide. So this one is gonna be a liquid and we'll collect from the base. And that's that one. 